Hey guys, are you in the market to upgrade your CPU? Should you go X99 or Z170? Let's find out. All right, we're in the market for an upgrade. What should we go for? Well, it depends on what you're doing. Are you gaming or are you video rendering, Photoshop, just watching videos, checking email? What are you doing? In my case, I need an upgrade and I game a little bit, a couple times a week, usually weekends. I render some video, I surf, you know, normal stuff, YouTube, whatever. So I don't need an Uber rig other than gaming, really. That's, that's the big thing. Or, and the video rendering, yeah, that's a big thing too. Well, you know what? I should get a big computer. <laughs> what am I gonna get? Well, this is actually a pretty good take. I just keep, keep rolling. So what do we want to upgrade to? A Z174 core? That's a good choice because it's per clock performance is outstanding. People have been overclocking them to four and a half, five gigahertz. If we're doing a lot of video rendering, maybe we want to go X99 because it has six and eight core and programs that render can use those extra cores. So which do we want to do? Well, I guess it depends. Do you just game or do you do other productivity sort of things? Well, the positives, other positives for the Z170 were a little bit newer technology. It had integrated USB 3.0 and it was the latest, greatest architecture from Intel. Those are positives. The negatives, it's still four core. I have a four core. I've had a four core for five plus years. Do I want to upgrade from a four core to a four core? Maybe I do. No, I don't. <laughs> so I was looking at X99. Well, what are the benefits and drawbacks of that? The benefits, extra cores, again, for rendering. And the drawbacks, it didn't have USB 3.0. It was a little bit older chipset. So that's a pretty big negative. You don't really want to upgrade to something that isn't the latest and greatest. Well, for me, this problem was solved with the X99-A. The board I picked up was from ASUS. It has integrated USB 3.0. That was a huge plus for me because I didn't want to upgrade to something that was already kind of outdated or was lacking features or options that I might want. Now, does that mean Z170 is just something you should pass over? No! The price on it is awesome. And again, the gaming performance and overclocking ability is awesome. You can delit it if you want and just crank it right up to 5 gigahertz and go to town and destroy games. Definitely, definitely something many people are doing. X99 doesn't have as fast a core clock uh, per core clock speed as the Z170. It's 14 nanometer Z170 versus 22 nanometer. So the X99 22 nanometer is not going to be as efficient. That's okay because you have the extra cores. And if you video render like I'm planning to do or have been doing for a while, those extra cores really do help. So that kind of helped me make my choice. I do game, but if I just video rendered and did workhorse stuff, then I would go with an 8 core. Again, if I could afford it. Another benefit to X99 was future upgradability. When I seen that the new X99, like the Dash A from ASUS, had integrated USB 3.0, along with hearing that Broadwell E was going to be compatible with current X99 motherboards, who knows if that's 100% true, but I'm assuming it is, then we are totally going to want to go with X99. Because not only do we get features that are currently the latest and greatest, but we can upgrade shortly down the road next year when the new computer or new CPUs come out. So bam. Thank you for watching this video, Z170 versus X99. Feel free to subscribe. Catch you later.